So we, we have a system of gears. This is what is called a planetary system of gears. We have three gears. Outer gear, and we, you can see it better maybe in the slide, right? An outer gear, and which we know the, vel the angular velocity, which is 20 radians per second. And then we have two other gears, one that is called H, rotating in this direction, and one that is S, that we have to find the rotation for that. We have to find the the angular velocity for that S, and we have to find the angular velocity for the bar connecting OA. So everything is rotating about point O. So what is the solution of this system, this problem? So we need to use the data that is given, and since we want to find the angular velocity of uh, this gear S, I will name this point that I is not named, I'm going to name this point B and this point C. And I'm going to find the velocities of B and C using the angular velocity of the other gears. Since we have rotation without slipping between point B and B prime, right? And between C and C prime, let me call it C prime and C, so we have the the points that are connecting the two gears, they move together. So if I calculate the velocity of C prime using the outer velocity, that will be the same as the velocity of the smaller gear. Using system fixed to gear R, so I will calculate the velocity of C. So the velocity of C will be the center the instantaneous center of rotation in this case is a center of rotation because it's not instantaneous, it's always rotating about O. So I will use that and I as you see, I will use that distance which is given, which is two fifty millimeters, so it will be zero point two five zero meters times the velocity times twenty. And that gives me five meters per second. So that velocity is here, this velocity right here, velocity of C. Then I can calculate the velocity of B using the gear H. So using the gear H, I can calculate the velocity of B, which the distance from the center of rotation is this distance that is given is 0 0.150 times and this angular velocity is 5, 0 0.75 meters per second. This is this velocity right here. So if I draw, I'm going to draw that little gear right here, which center in A. And as you see, I have the velocity of point C which is equals to 5, and then I have the velocity of point B, which is 0 0.75. If I connect those two velocities, because as you recall, the instantaneous center of rotation of that gear will not be A, will be a point within this line, because this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular, but if I connect those two uh, lines will be somewhere around here, instantaneous center of rotation. So it's different point from point A. So point A is right here. So we have a instantaneous center of rotation different from the uh, actual geometric center of the gear. So we can call this, since we don't know where it is, I'm going to call this distance x. And since the diameter of this gear is 50, so the whole distance is 100, so this distance right here will be 0 0.1 minus x. So where is that point located? Well, we can use the relations of similar triangles to find where x is located. And as you remember, the height divided by the base 
equals to the height divided by the base. So it will be 5 divided by 0 0.1 minus x will be equals to 0 0.75 divided by x. So from here, I can solve for x. And x, I have the value right here, is equals to 0 0.1. 0 0.13 meters. Actually, as you see, my, my drawing is not very proportional because this is 5 as this is 0 0.75. So it's, it's less than one fifth. And yes, the instantaneous center of rotation is very much closer to B than is to C. So that's where the center of rotation is located. So if we want to locate it E respect to A, so this distance right here will be equals to the radius of that minus x. So um, I have to kind of, so it will be 0 0.05 minus x. So that will be the distance from A to the instantaneous center of rotation. The velocity of B will be equals to the distance between B and the instantaneous center of rotation, omega s, being that s, the gear. So from here, I can solve for omega s will be the velocity of B divided by the distance, which is x. So the velocity of B I already calculated is 0 0.75, and this is x, which is 0. 0 0.01304. Therefore, the angular velocity of my gear C is 57.5 radians per second. So this is the first variable that I was asked to find, which is this one right here. And now I've been asked to find the uh, velocity of this link the angular velocity of the link OA. So we have to find the velocity of A, and then we will be able to find the angular velocity of OA. So I'm going to find the velocity of A. Velocity of A will be the distance between A and the instantaneous center of station, and the velo angular velocity of this disk. And we already said that this is equals to 0. 0 0.05 minus x, and the angular velocity of WS we just found, right? That will be 0 0.05 minus 0 0.1304 times 57.5. So that gives me the velocity of A, which is equals to 2125 meters per second. Finally, we got that the velocity of A is also distance from O to A, right? I can calculate the velocity of A in two different ways. Now, times the angular velocity of OA. Because I can calculate the velocity of A respect to that point instantaneous center of rotation, or I can calculate it from OA. And then I will solve for angular velocity of OA. And that will give me the velocity of A over that distance. And that distance is, since this is uh, 150 and this is 50 more, that will be 0 0.2, right? So that will be 2125 over 0 0.2 meters. And finally, we got that the angular velocity of OA is equal to 10.6 radians per second. In which direction goes? Since this is, a, we found that this is moving in that direction, but the the angular velocity of S a, of S is in this direction. So we finally see that this move in this direction, and this one move also in this direction. So this is the velocity of OA, and this is the velocity of S.
and will be this direction. Okay, so this is the solution of this problem.